Thank you, President Feldman, and the entire American Library Association for this incredible honor. While it pains me to not be here with you in real life, it is perhaps appropriate that I join you digitally, both to give thanks and to share with you our small, fiercely apolitical nonprofit that's seeking to rebuild law and lawmaking for the internet age. And while it falls to me to accept the James Madison Award, I'm really doing so on behalf of the entire Open Gut Foundation family. To my team, some of whom are with you there today. Raise your hands, guys. To our board of advisors, to my co-founder, Congressman Darrell Lysa, to our fantastic funders, to our civic tech friends and allies, to those of you who have been fighting for years for a more informed, engaged citizenry, and to my mother, my first librarian and my greatest teacher. This one's for you. We are gathered here today, surrounded by a tremendous community of open government allies, partners, and friends. True partnership is what powers the Open Gov Foundation. It has to, because we are a very small nonprofit with a very large mission creating a 21st century operating system for legislatures, one that is free and open source, runs on open legal data, and that is fueled by the deep love for liberty, equality, and personal freedom on which this great American experiment rests. The Open Gov Foundation exists to transform paper-based legislatures into digital ones, radically increasing their efficiency and effectiveness and revolutionizing how representative government works with and for citizens. Our focus right now is building the first one in partnership with the Chicago City Council, where I am today. But we'll soon be back in Congress with something very exciting very soon. So I invite you to learn more and join us at the Open Gov Foundation at opengovfoundation.org. And if you like what you see, lend whatever support you can. Our massive mission, transforming not one, but all legislatures from the paper-based past into the digital present and future, began a little more than four years ago inside the bowels of the US House of Representatives, where I served as a staffer. The Open Gov Foundation was born during a white-hot congressional battle to, fittingly enough, protect public access to the internet and to preserve your right to know what the federal government is doing with your tax dollars. Now, openness advocates won that critical debate over the Stop Online Piracy Act, SOPA, and the Protect IP Act, PIPA. But the best part is that this community triumphed, not with loads of lobbyists or special interest money, but by going back to the basics by updating America's founding principles for the internet age. We won that fight by opening up the legislative process to the public on the internet, putting political and policy-making power back into the hands of the people, and giving everybody an equal voice and a seat at the table. To keep the web open, our humble contribution from inside of Congress was this, a piece of homebrewed, hacked together, online policy-making software that we, somewhat aspirationally and definitely admiringly named Madison. Today, that struggle for open access and equality continues. In fact, it is as old as America. And as open technology and open information has become the infrastructure of our daily lives and our work lives, the Open Gov Foundation and this community are fighting to bring those benefits to our civic lives. Now, I don't need to tell you that this is a fight. There's a war on. And on its outcome rests nothing less than the future viability of representative government in the United States of America. Today, I hope to share with you an urgent and hopeful view from these front lines, where we have been since December 2011, and those fateful first days with Madison. President James Madison once wrote, the advancement and diffusion of knowledge is the only guardian of true liberty. His words are as true today as they were nearly 200 years ago. His wise words sprung from decades of deep and dangerous sacrifice for true liberty. 
He had witnessed and waged two bloody wars for it. He had architected and then argued for this unique place on earth where true liberty is not just a possibility, but a foundational principle, a place where freedom is a feature and not a bug. Now, you don't need to be a pollster or a pundit to know that, now more than ever, liberty is in need of guarding. But from what? In this enlightened age, who could ever be against the advancement and the diffusion of knowledge? Who could possibly seek to limit my liberty and yours? Sadly, some people do. And I'm here to say that we have met the enemy. It is among us, invading our libraries, infiltrating our legislatures, and actively impeding the advancement and diffusion of civic knowledge. But unlike Madison's day, the enemy is not a tyrannical, monarchical monopolist of public knowledge and of printing presses. No, we face an even more insidious foe, one that I call the political, legal, industrial complex. This cabal is comprised of enormous legal industry corporations and the politicians who are their pawns. The political, legal, industrial complex now privately controls, in one way or the other, the vast majority of the most important public information in the United States. Our public laws, our legal codes, our legislation, our rules and our regulations, and the very edicts of government. Now imagine for a moment, if you had to pay a fee to read the Constitution, or if the Declaration of Independence was copyrighted by the printer who printed it. While Congress has mostly prohibited the political, legal, industrial complex from owning federal information, what you just imagined is reality everywhere else. What are the effects? Well, if the keystone data for democracy is in the hands of big business, if public access is blocked by paywalls and ridiculous copyright restrictions, we no longer have a government based on laws, not men, because we don't have the laws. If the public law is under private control, at some point you can no longer advance and diffuse civic knowledge. You can no longer foster an informed and engaged citizenry. And you cannot possibly enjoy the full freedom and liberty that is every American's birthright. Those are the stakes. As past James Madison award winner, Aaron Swartz knew all too well. The tragedy of Aaron's death is exhibit A, that the political, legal, industrial complex will stop at nothing to protect and perpetuate this broken system that benefits only them. Don't believe me? Well, let's look at our local governments. At this very moment, two of the most powerful, if not the most powerful cities in the history of the world in the, in the United States of America do not have control of their laws. I repeat, two of the largest and most powerful cities in the history of the world don't own their own laws. The political, legal, industrial complex does and it is holding these cities hostage for their own petty and private gain. Let's look at our state governments. According to Sarah Glassmeyer's groundbreaking state legal information census, and I quote, no state provides barrier-free access to their legal information. No state. A whopping 94% of state laws are covered in copyright restrictions. And 100% of states have, at some level, effectively ceded ownership of the public laws to private corporations. Oh, it gets worse. One state that shall remain nameless, but it is famous for its peanuts, is suing an American citizen, Carl Malamud, for doing nothing more than publishing its public laws on the internet. Carl a lifelong advancer and diffuser of knowledge, stands accused by that state government of pirating.
piracy. And that state government goes even further, alleging that the simple act of publishing public laws online is, and I quote from their lawsuit, a form of terrorism. Does that make us terrorists? Well, that's for the courts and for the US Congress to decide. But one thing is crystal clear. This is how the political, legal, industrial complex works. It poll taxes our public laws, extracting rent and ransom to enrich itself. It holds our communities hostage, refusing to relinquish what is decidedly not theirs. It stifles innovation and openness, forcing us to play by its rules. Why? Because it owns the law. And what's the rancid cherry on top? The political, legal, industrial complex sues into silence anyone, like Carl, who dares try to loosen its grip on our central democratic data. Now you may be asking, but what should become of legal services? Should we do away with codification companies and private standards-making bodies? What of the lawyers? Think of the book printers. What of LexisNexis? What of them indeed? Folks, they are lawyers. They're good ones. We want, at the Open Gov Foundation and this community, to help them be the best damn lawyers money can buy. For the fact is that most communities don't have the money or the manpower to do all the critical legal work that needs doing. And while I know that there may be some in our community that disagree, I believe that there will always be a role for private enterprise in this most important of public spaces. But there is a world of difference between filling a legal resource gap to help governments fulfill their constitutional obligation and what the political, legal, industrial complex has become. There is a better way. We're building it, the Open Gov Foundation, through our public-private, not-for-profit partnership, the City of Chicago. Here's how it works, and I promise you it can work anywhere, with any government, any civic technology outfit, and any legal services company, even the big and the bad guys. In Chicago, we help create the open source means of efficient, effective legislative operations, delivering the best possible access and the best possible public civic engagement opportunity. We do this alongside Clerk Susanna Mendoza, her terrific team, and the city council itself. After the council does its work, legislating, voting, hearing, it then ships all of its legislation to American Legal Publishing, a stellar employee-owned codification company with world-class lawyers and wonderful people. American Legal updates the city laws, then delivers everything back to the citizens of Chicago with absolutely zero restrictions and no strings attached. We then take that information and transform it and transform that law into the ridiculously useful, user-friendly public resource that's free, you see at chicagocode.org. Now in this partnership, each of us is doing what we love. Each of us is putting the public first. And each of us is proudly advancing and diffusing knowledge, guarding true liberty. Isn't that how it's supposed to work in America? In this time of sweeping technological change, a new day is dawning for our democracy. Our community of fighters for the freedom of information is, at long last, beating back the entrenched and well-funded enemies of openness. And as the tide turns, I have a message for card-carrying members of the political, legal, industrial complex. We are no longer afraid of you. 
we will not let you sue us silently into the night. And we are not going to stop until every law, everything with the force of law, is publicly available for free in an open format and with absolutely zero restriction. Friends, the progress we've made over the last couple years is awesome. Every person in this room and watching this video has a success story to share. But this progress is profoundly new and frighteningly fragile. Without a lot more help, without a lot more friends, without a lot more money, this once in a generation opportunity will slip through our fingers. So let's seize it. We have to. For we all have a serious stake in seeing American government rebuilt on a firm foundation of law, not men, in the internet age. Working together, we can return the public law to the public. It's already happening. Working together, we can restore faith in our great system of government. And working together, we can renew the powerful promises passed on to us by women and men like James Madison. Promises passed down to us through the laws in whose defense so many guardians of true liberty have given their last full measure. Thank you for this opportunity and for so honoring the Open Gov Foundation, all of our team, all of our partners, all of our friends and all of our funders. Good day, good luck, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.